Week three of the college football season and Alabama fans are frustrated. They're looking for this team to regroup. We spoke with tied players leading into the South Florida game and they straight up said they're ticked off. Not going to say exactly what they said, but they're upset. Mike McCoy, Simone Eli, we are going to talk everything Alabama football as they look to bounce back from their loss to Texas and now prepare for South Florida. We'll talk uh, predictions, what's going on with the offense, the defense, and much more. Let's go head to head. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for week three of the college football season. Mike McCoy, excited to have you with us again, joining us from Maximum Performance Institute in Bessemer. Mike, uh, how was your workout today? Do you have a little bit more energy right now? Because you're probably fired up from Saturday. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm ticked off from Saturday, yeah. uh, to say the least. But yeah, I got a little, nice little pump in, trying to get my little Shannon Sharp on. But you I like know, that. Hey, I like just that. the younger version. <laughs> of course, keep it fresh, keep it fresh. I want to quickly thank our sponsor, the Alabama Cattlemen's Association, as we are talking Alabama football. Before we get into South Florida, let's go back to Texas. It's been the headline. It's been everything that everyone's talking about because it's really been the biggest uh, college football game so far this season. And Alabama falls to the Longhorns 34-24 on Saturday in Bryant-Denny Stadium. An amazing atmosphere, not the outcome that Tide fans were hoping for. Mike, when you look at the game, what is your overall reaction uh, to the entire output and then the final? Did we? I thought we had new coordinators. <laughs> it looked like identical to last year. I know the fans don't want to hear it. I was pumped. I was ready. I, they sold me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, gave, they gave me a nice pump fake. Um, just frustrated, uh, mm -hmm. just on every level. <sighs> Let me say this. If Coach Saban wants to continue to be dominant in every aspect where he's always, he has always done, he's going to have to go find some more Malachi Morris, some more guys like Darius Payne. Like you're going to get in the meat of it. You can no longer let these boys leave outside of three states. Alabama for one, Mississippi, and Georgia. Like you, them should be your fishing holes, baby. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants. Mm -hmm. You got to get some guys that want to be a part of. I remember guys had scholarships to go play elsewhere and took preferred walk-ons because their grandparents played there. Hey, man, I think this NIL deal has completely ruined it because he can't coach the way he wants to. Mm -hmm. Because now it's like you cohort the NFL guys. Mm -hmm. What do you say to a kid who's making a hundred K a year? Yeah. Yeah. They and don't struggle right. no more. It's like the NFL. I mean, you got guys that are actually getting paychecks. They're not, you know, they're, they're out there knowing that at the end of the day, regardless win or lose, that they're going to have that money to fall back on. That just didn't happen. Uh, you know, 10 years ago, it didn't happen 20 years ago, but especially in the last several years that Nick Saban has built what he has. And I think that that's part of why coach was so hesitant and so loud about the, NIL and about the transfer portal and how it was going to impact the game. And we are now seeing, Mike, what that is doing to college football. Now, the fan bases who have not been good and the, the programs that have not been very good for a long time, of course, they're liking to see the the, the parity and, and the guys transferring all over the place. But for Alabama and for Nick Saban and what he's built and continue to try to build and continue, uh, it's a frustrating situation. He's going to have to call his old coaches. Not to even shift gears. If you pay attention to what Prime does, all his players love him. Yeah. When you don't have guys on that staff that have relationship with the players and feel like they can go in that room and sit down with their coach, it's not going to work out. Mm -hmm. Kids nowadays, they don't care until they know that you care. Feel that. And I'm saying that because I deal with them on – I see them every day. Yeah. I see – 300 kids every day. So you have to pour into these kids. And I think right now it has become just a business. Now, if we're going to do some business, let me at least do business with somebody I love and genuinely care for. Yeah. Call Coach Williams back. Call Coach Burns back. Look, man, you better get Cochran. Get Cochran back on the phone. That's the heart. <laughs> when Cochran left, that is the heart, man. Because every player that you ever talk to who played under him, they're going to tell you. They play good cop and bad cop. And Cochran was somebody that poured into those guys religiously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right now, we don't see it. It looked like the, the the season's off the chicken. 
It look like no season on the broccoli, and it look like asparagus and water. Man, we in the South. We need some sweet tea, baby. Let's talk a little bit of X's and O's. And the first guy I think we need to mention is Jalen Miller. And I want to be very clear that I don't think that one single loss ever falls on one coach, one guy, one, one anything. Um, but Jalen Milrow is at the front and center of a lot of this because of the quarterback competition, because he came in and in moments and in certain throws, he looked good. I mean, the guy can throw the ball a mile and he delivered some of those passes um, on the money. But then yeah. he's struggling. Two huge, costly interceptions. It seems like he was uncomfortable in the pocket at times. And Nick Saban even said there, were, there was a moment where he thought about making a change. But then he did something great. It's a huge roller coaster, Mike. And as you know, consistency on offense is an absolute must. I, 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 my biggest question would be the guys up front. How much time did he actually have? Not a lot. So it's hard to trust your quarterback. He doesn't trust the guys in front of him. Dude, they allowed pressure on nearly half of all dropbacks. Half. 46% of the time, they allowed Somebody pressure. Somebody's not doing their job. Uh, the O-line's issue. The run game, though. Mike, how many times does Alabama have a national championship contender team and not have a run game? How many times? Never. Never. Uh, I've never seen for. Alabama win a national title and have a subpar uh, run game. 63 yards on the night. 63 yards. So whether you put that on the offensive line, whether you put that on the guys in the backfield who are talented guys, that, I mean, Lord. that ain't going to that gonna fly. Lord, have mercy. Say that one more time. Echo that. But between the three backs, 63 yards. Lord, have mercy. Mm. Yeah. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> so Nick Saban straight up said on Monday, listen, we have to have more consistency. And I think that's easy to say, maybe harder to do. Uh, another problem, penalties, the turnovers. And we'll get to the secondary bus in a moment, but – these are guys, it just doesn't seem like it's flowing the way you would have hoped. You have a new OC come in, you have got changes up on the staff, and you have a new quarterback, but, I mean, it's not like everybody's new. All I'm going to say is they don't – there's no energy morale on the sideline. Guys don't look like they want to be there. And these five stars, what? I, the film looks amazing. Maybe they got a good editor. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But they are no. not who we watched in high school on film. Look at their play call and, and look at ours. They look like they had gumbo. We look like we went fit five. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was it was nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a basic offense. Mm -hmm. And maybe he hasn't had enough time to to get into it. Where are the RPOs? Where's the play action? Where are the swing? Where are the bubbles? I mean, where the receivers are going to step up and take over that leadership role? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I, I can say it. It's, yeah. I've seen it's a lot. I've witnessed a lot of kids on Friday night uh, here in the, in Birmingham area. They not even recruit, not even on the radar. Mm -hmm. So, hey man, they whoever recruiting is there, they need to tighten up. Now, every week we've talked about this defense and the you know Kevin Steele coming in and making it this Bama strong. Uh, you know, ain't going to take nothing type of defense. But listen, that defense that we thought was maybe there in week one wasn't there in week two. They didn't turn over the Longhorns one time. They didn't sack the quarterback one time. What's up with that? Because you're talking about this offensive play calling. Well, what's going on on the defensive side, Mike? No pressure. It, exactly. I, I, Man, look, I love it. And I try not to talk about babies. You know, these are still kids. They still have a lot of room to go. But when your linebackers is getting dropped, <laughs> getting, getting, you know, getting belittled out there i'm just shaking my head once you're a one loss team you kind of have that you go around walking on eggshells a little bit now in terms of this college football playoff era because two lost teams don't make it in the college football playoffs now i'm not saying the bama can't go win the sec and all then coach and players said all that like all the goals still lie ahead of us yeah that's fine and dandy but you got that one loss and it's just not a good look. People start to consider somebody different regardless of what happens in SEC play. That is a concern and it always in the back of your mind. Maybe you're playing a little bit more tight than you would throughout the year now knowing that there is that one loss. I'm, I'm right there with you. I think in order for – one thing I know about Coach Saban, I know he's one step ahead of everybody. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure he's going to figure something out, get this plan together. And my hopes are that he gets former guys that were in there. You got to keep guys like Eric Anders, Marcel Darius, uh, uh, 
just former players on the sideline that were in that been through what you guys are going through. Mm-hmm. And right now, it looked like they're on the pace where we get maybe another loss. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just, I don't see a fire. It's not that they don't have the talent or they don't have the piece. I just don't see a we're finna dominate mm-hmm. mindset. Yeah. And I think that's what fans are upset about. I think that's what people are are ticked off about. I mean, you only see guys on their hands, holding their hands up on the sideline. Uh, mm-hmm. It's nothing. It's just looking at the clock. So South Florida's up on deck. LBM, we're going to take a trip to uh, Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. It's a 2.30 kickoff on Saturday. And how I view this game is really a final tune-up, a final opportunity for Alabama to get it right before SEC play, which starts with, by the way, Ole Miss. I'm with you on this one. And I think this is going to be Milrose. I'm not going to say his final chapter, but if you don't get it done this week, Mm -hmm. he's going to be looking and thinking ahead, what is going to be my next move? Mm -hmm. And again, is it the play calling or is it the player? Bama's more than a 30-point favorite in this game. Mike, what is the biggest question mark that you have for this tied team? I know there's probably a few of them, but what is the biggest question mark that you have for them going into week three of the season? Their discipline and their toughness. That is going to be my biggest thing. Their discipline to do to do your job. Yeah. And toughness to hit somebody, knock his nose off. Mm-hmm. Like, let me see you. Uh, I think that's what has to be restored at that university is us coming, not just me, it's every era of guys coming back continuously pouring into this university and showing these guys exactly what success looks like. Well, we'll see how things look on Saturday at 2.30. Let's talk predictions now, Mike. We were both wrong last week because we picked Alabama. You were really wrong. You had a – (laughs) Completely. Yeah, you had like totally dominant performance. I was a little bit at least a a closer game. Um, But I don't think that Alabama is going to have a huge issue going on the road to South Florida. But where do you see this looking like on the scoreboard? Oh, give me 35-7. Okay. I'm similar. I got 42 to 10. And I think, like you said, this is just an opportunity for Alabama to tighten up, to figure out what their identity is before it matters more than it's ever going to matter. And that is the beginning of SEC play in week four. Yes, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. Yep. We will see. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Head to Head for Mike McCoy. I'm Simone Eli. I want to shout out. Our sponsor, one more time, Alabama Cattlemen's Association. Uh, We look forward to kickoff at 2.30, and we will recap everything next week as Alabama heads into Ole Miss. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers.